Diana. Um, I am like a week late for our December tarot scope. I'm sorry. I was um, just sort of living my life and I forgot. And here I am. So we're a little bit late, but we are going to do the usual today. We're going to look at the overall energies for the month of December. We'll look at challenges that are ahead for us or maybe behind us since we are six, seven days into December now and what gifts are available to us. I want to acknowledge the fact that it is pitch black in my apartment right now. I refuse to turn on overhead lights, and if I turn on the lights behind me, then it'll wash me out. So we're just gonna do the dark. And bonus is that in the dark, you can see my little mushroom color changing nightlight, which I think is a really sweet feature. Okay, let's get into it. So our overall energy for the month of December is the Ace of Swords reversed. So there is, it's worth mentioning, some heavy Neptunian action this month. We're seeing, uh, as Mercury is also stationing retrograde on December 12th, is it? And will be retrograde through early January. And when we experience a Mercury retrograde in the signs of Capricorn and Sag, often this kind of brings us into places where we may be in denial over the sort of structures of our lives and also over sort of our vision for our lives. And of course, we experience collective transits. So these things might not impact us at a super personal level. It could be the way that we're sort of seeing like collective events and things happening. There's sort of a propaganda element to this month and that's super heightened because of the fact that a good part of this month is spent in Mercury retrograde, with Mercury retrograde. And then we also have Mercury forming harsh aspects to the planet Neptune, which can lead to disinformation, to propaganda, to a lot of the stuff that we're already seeing in droves as we watch, in particular, Israel and the U.S., spew a bunch of propaganda and hate publicly. It's a lot of Ace of Swords reversed action. And this can also represent at times us wanting to stay kind of stuck in a place of lies or in denial. And maybe we've already been presented with information that we kind of just need to accept, but we're having a hard time doing that. And so this coming up as our overall energy is a little bit concerning to me, not in like a freak out way, but more in a way of like, it's very possible that you're going to accept something as truth that is not true. And there's a need for us to really kind of root into what truth feels like in our body and get really familiar with the felt experience of truth versus untruth. <laughs> and that could be like lies of omission. That could be like not having all of the details or all of the information that you need to really kind of grasp a situation. And so again, this could be at a personal level, this could be certainly collectively, um, but the way that this might manifest in your own life is going to depend a lot on where the signs of Capricorn and Sagittarius fall within your natal chart. So it would be really worthwhile for you to check out your chart if you're not already that familiar with it. You would want to look specifically for the houses that contain the signs of Capricorn and Sagittarius, and they'll be right next to each other. So Mercury is going to re-enter the sign of Sagittarius and spend some time at the final degrees of Sag, and then it'll station direct and it'll move back into the sign of Capricorn. And so we have this action happening in our both our cap house, cap cap houses, cap houses and our Sag houses. And so when I feel like it's important to talk about this retrograde more. And so when Mercury stations retrograde, we don't need to freak out. This happens like three times a year and it's roughly about three weeks. And it's a time when we're meant to analyze and reflect upon and integrate experiences and knowledge and perspectives. And so it's a really beautiful time for us to be in a place of reflection. And because at the time that I'm recording this, Mercury is in its shadow period, which means that it's basically moving through the degrees that it will soon turn around and move back over, not literally turn around, but it appears to turn around in the sky and start moving backward. 
And when that shift happens, we are brought back to material that we've just moved through. And so it could be that whatever's coming up in your life now, if you're watching this like at the beginning of December, that this material is going to come back around and you're going to be given space to reflect on it as Mercury is retrograde and then space to kind of make changes or at least make new choices as Mercury stations direct and moves back over that terrain a third time. So for those of you who are not like super astro literate, this might be a lot of information to take in and that's okay. You don't have to take in anything that is confusing or overwhelming. I wouldn't recommend going out and trying to like learn all of this language right now. I would recommend grounding because when we have Mercury in Capricorn, which is a and sorry, not fixed, a cardinal earth sign, we're really needing to be in connection with our material world. There's a mental focus that is intended to be put, <laughs> I can't word right now, There we're intended to put, place our focus and to focus on the material. And so that's... <laughs> So that's going to gonna really highlight, again, the areas that contain the sign of Capricorn in your chart. And so to give you a personal example to kind of like latch on to, um, my ninth house, I have Capricorn on my ninth house cusp. I also have some cap in my eighth house. And so for me, though, the majority of Capricorn is my ninth house. And my ninth house, our ninth houses are related to our beliefs. It's related to kind of the higher mind. Um, that could be philosophy. It can be like higher education. It can be mind expanding journeys, whether that's a metaphorical journey or a literal journey, like traveling abroad and being exposed to new cultures, to new languages, to new uh, traditions. And it's also associated with religion and like all of these things that are more often sort of traditional, um, but rooted in belief, rooted in faith, rooted in philosophy, etc. And so what I'm already noticing is that this transit as Mercury has been in Capricorn in my ninth house, it's sort of emphasizing to me the way that my mind, I guess, has has grown accustomed to certain ways of thinking about the world. And I am noticing sort of like little pokes, little prods to expand and to open up my mind to kind of new horizons and new philosophies. And so I expect that that will be heightened when Mercury stations retrograde. Um, I also am noticing that my astrology practices are shifting and evolving and I'm feeling more committed to them. And so I'm wondering how that's going to evolve. And so it doesn't have to be like earth shaking. Mercury retrogrades do not have to be earth shaking. In fact, I would venture to say that they rarely are for us personally. Um, but things to generally kind of expect during this time, fruit fly, is communication challenges, is maybe disruptions in sort of our day-to-day functions that could be work-related, especially that could be in any really aspect of our life though. And again, that's going to depend on your chart. So material to consider if you're already familiar. My core advice here is to root in truth and to ask important questions and to seek facts to fact check the information that you're listening to and absorbing, to not, or at least to, to the best of your ability, to not spread misinformation, to check your sources, to check the reliability of those sources, and to be really thoughtful about who you are listening to. Because this is a time when confusion is very likely, okay? Long, long explanation of that, but I hope it's helpful for someone out there. Okay, our challenge this month, interesting, is the Ace of Rods reversed. So two reversed aces. So there's something here about us experiencing sort of like false start energy. Aces represent new beginnings. So with the swords, that's like the beginning of a new idea often or the beginning of a new way of thinking or communicating or connecting to the mind. With the Ace of Wands, this is more about the spirit 
And so rods, wands, spirit, fire, energy. It's a feeling to me of being kind of maybe disheartened, maybe feeling like we're having trouble grasping hold of inspiration this month. It's interesting that my camera just got blurry right as I was saying that, and that kind of represents to me like tired eyes. So that could be very real for some of us. The Ace of Wands kind of reminds me of the sign of Aries, and Aries is connected to the head. It rules the head. And so the fact that like the eyes are getting blurry and vision, and there could be something here about us just being worn down. It is the end of like the traditional calendar year. And as we're moving into the holiday season, a lot of us might be feeling tired. A lot of us might be feeling sort of dejected or getting stuck in this sort of Capricornian results focused, success focused attitude, and maybe not appreciating all of the energy that we've put into our world this year. Capricorn can be a harsh sign. It can be a sign that ruled by Saturn can be sort of um, critical and and certainly like judgmental of self where kind of that feeling of never getting enough done, not having enough hours in the day to accomplish what you want to accomplish, having trouble celebrating your wins and celebrating your accomplishments because it feels like that goalpost is always getting moved. And so it could be that for some of us this month, that feeling is very much here. Like we are having trouble really appreciating all that we've done. And it could be a really opportune moment for us to actually make a list because Capricorn likes the facts. Capricorn likes to see sort of the proof in the pudding. And so that might be a beautiful exercise there we go. Clarity comes when we, <laughs> I'm, I'm suddenly clear again on the screen. And so I think that clarity and purpose and appreciation could really be found through going through a simple Capricornian exercise of making a list, like truly list off all of the things that you have accomplished. And that does not have to be like material accomplishments or traditional measurements of success. It could be like, I uh, repaired a relationship this year, or I improved my communication skills this year. I, you know, crossed a milestone when it comes to my healing. Um, I built a healthier and happier relationship with my body this year and with my self image this year. All of these things are major, major accomplishments. And I would even like kind of go so far as to say that they're more important than the sort of material, like typical success metrics, like how much money you made, if you got a promotion, if you bought that thing, these more internal metrics, if you can base this exercise off of those, I think that you'll find that there's actually this real sort of humbling that happens where it grounds you and it helps you to really see through the veil of enforced perfectionism and this sort of like white supremacy culture of achievement and striving and you know it's very like it's very capitalist and so I think that this exercise if you ground it in sort of your your personal values like what do you care about as a person what at the end of the day are the the ways that you would want to reflect upon your life and say, I lived that way and I'm like happy with the choices that I made. How have you lived in accordance with your values this year? And please try your best to not make that into some sort of like extra self punitive exercise, which I know can happen for a lot of us. We start making a list and we start just thinking about every failure and every way we stepped out of line or out of integrity um, you're going to need to have boundaries with yourself, I think, through the end of this year, especially, because I think it's going to be easy to fall into that type of pattern. And yet it's going to be just as available for you to make a new choice and to say, like, I hear you, little critic human in my head, but like, you're going to go back here. And for now, like I can, I can come back to you at a later date if, if we want to chat, but like for now I'm having a meeting with this part of me that is celebratory and kind. Okay, let's look at a gift that's available to us. Interesting, <laughs> the Three of Swords. So the Three of Swords, while this is a difficult card, 
when this comes up as a gift for me, it kind of feels more like the reversed three of swords, which is like the removal of the swords from our hearts. So whereas the three of swords upright can indicate heartbreak, and it's likely that heartbreak has been a theme or at least has shown up for you in some way this year. Um, I think for those of us who are tuned in to the state of the world and what's occurring in Palestine and Congo and Sudan and Armenia and all, there are multiple genocides happening. And I think it's, it's really hard to be engaged and to not feel heartbroken right now. And if this three of swords has not been so personally focused in your life, it's certainly a sort of like collective experience that even if you're not personally taking this super hard, the collective trauma and the collective grief and pain is not something that stays contained. That's something that we all experience to varying degrees because we are humans in a world, creatures, animals in a world that are connected to all other creatures and animals. And so whatever way heartbreak and pain has shown up for you, and I'm feeling more like this is kind of reflecting on the year, like really taking stock of all that's happened. I get the sense that this December for us is going to be a period of sort of being able to sit with that pain and actually express it, actually feel it. And that may not sound like a gift, but it is because when we don't tap into feelings, emotions, when we don't allow ourselves to feel those, they don't just disappear. They get stuffed into our body. They get stuffed into our psyche. And so I think that just like I mentioned, having boundaries with the way that we talk to ourselves and the way that we criticize ourselves, I think another necessary boundary is sort of like, I want to say I'm using all these sort of harsh words almost or like rigid words like mercury and cap energy um, which is not always like mercury and capricorn can be very beautiful um, but right now it's feeling more harsh and i think who it's weird i'm kind of like i'm in it's like i'm in i'm in it right now um this happens to me sometimes i have a 12th house sun and mercury so when i'm talking about something sometimes i'm suddenly immersed in the energy of it um but what i feel here is that we need to also create boundaries with our time and respect for our processes and maybe respect for other people's processes too understanding that we experience grief in different ways and we show grief in different ways. Some people mask really effectively and you have no idea what's going on with them. And other people are very expressive and have like no poker face and you can tell exactly what's going on beneath the surface. Those two people may be experiencing the same degree of, of grief. Uh, we just would never know. And so I think that there's a call for us to respect other people's way of processing their emotions and to respect ours. And it might start with respecting ours because when we can show ourselves that sort of compassion, it's easier for us to extend that outward, right? Like when we can show ourselves kindness, it's easier to be kind to other people. And so I think that there might be something really here about practicing kindness for ourselves and compassion for ourselves as we experience big emotions. And I know for many people, like this is one of the hardest times of year. The holidays can be really difficult, um, especially if you've, if you've lost loved ones, especially if you're estranged from family. It can be a time that is very activating and very lonely. Uh, and I think a lot of us are lonely and, and it, yeah, I, f I feel it and I see it every day. I see it in people's faces. I see it in people's words. I feel it on them. And I think that giving ourselves compassion and also giving other people compassion, understanding that we're all experiencing different degrees of suffering at different times in our life. And that suffering, while hopefully impermanent <laughs> and is impermanent, you know, emotions are impermanent, um, that can bring us to a deeper degree of compassion. It can send us in the opposite direction too. 
But the intention this month is to allow difficult emotions to help you deepen your heart's capacity to feel love and to feel compassion. That is all I have. If you're interested in booking a personal reading with me, I want to quickly share three actually time sensitive offerings that are available right now. So first up, I'm offering 2024 year ahead readings. There are two options. There's a $33 and a $66. One is like a mini reading that taps into just like we did the overall energy, the challenges and the gifts that lie ahead for you in 2024. The deeper option includes deeper insight on those three topics. And then you'll also get an anchor card for every single month of the year. So that's sort of like a predictive package per se. Um, and that'll offer tips and resources you can come back to throughout the entire year. I'm also going to be retiring an offer called The Portal. It's a 12th house astrology reading that also weaves together uh, Akashic Records. Yeah, I just got confused for a second. <laughs> um, it, I mean, technically, no, it's, it's like a psychic reading plus astrology plus tarot. My Mercury is retrograding for sure. Um, and it's a beautiful reading. I'm really, it, it's like probably my favorite reading that I've created. And this is an opportunity to explore the 12th house in your charts to kind of unearth the hidden depths possessed within that part of your chart, which is very sensitive, very mystical. And it's a place that allows us to tap into both sort of the hidden pain within our chart and also the hidden gems. There's a lot of beautiful gifts that are available to us within the 12th and legacy. So a lot of inherited burdens from our lineage. So if you're someone who's engaged in ancestral healing, this is a powerful reading for you. If you're someone who's looking to further develop your psychic and intuitive gifts, this is a powerful reading for you. So you can check that out. And finally, I just rolled out a new 2024 package. It includes four astrology readings with me, one per season or one per quarter. And it's 444 for four 90 minute readings, which for the amount of time and consultation that you receive is a really good price. And these 90 minute readings also include tarot forecasts for each season, along with an examination of your transits. So the ways that the planets in the sky are impacting your chart personally, and we'll look ahead at the next three months and also reflect on the previous three months. So you can really deepen your relationship with your chart over time. So you can plan ahead for the next quarter. And so you can really integrate the experiences that you've had over the last three months. So all of those offerings are available to book now. You can do so through the link that you'll find in the description box below through my link tree. And you can also get on my newsletter to get a 10% off code, which can be used on any of those readings, even the package. And um, I mean, that's a quick $44 off. So nothing to sniff at. I hope to see you guys soon. I love you. And as always, feel free to comment and share your reflections on this reading. I really appreciate it to hear your voices. Okay, bye.